we got kicked off right when it was getting good, but I feel like Karan was getting ready to give us some more heat. I'm going to see if she jumps back on here. Marv, what's happening, big homie? Karan was giving us heat, wasn't she? Definitely. We're going to see if she popped back in, see if she got like five more minutes for us. I didn't want to cut her off like that. The IG Live be, be doing this dirty when we get good. Karan is back in. There we go. There we go. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Yes, yes, yes. Sure. Got you back. It was IG. It wasn't me. So don't no, think it was I me. Think really, I think we should dive into some of these questions. I feel like we... You know, I'm a huge, my form of leadership is question based because I don't want to educate you based on where I want you to be. I really kind of know where you are so that I can answer some questions that might be help, helpful for you guys and it may also help other people. So we really should look at some of the questions that we receive. So one of the questions I remember that somebody was asking was, how do you feel about being a female? Like, how did you get over that fear of being a female getting started? So you feel the fear, you do it anyway, because you feel the fear. You're in a male dominant industry. You have men who don't respect you if you don't have a husband. You have men that request to speak to your husband hey, in the middle of a rehab. You know, talk to absolutely. You know, you have guys that they just absolutely just don't perform because they don't feel they feel like you're doing something that they should be doing. I got so, you. So once again, um, being a female in the male dominant industry is nothing to me. I don't see it. I don't think about it. I don't make it an issue. I don't make it a hurdle. I get it done. We have to get it done. You have to respect me. I have to respect you. If you're not the person for the job, that's what it is. I think more and more we're seeing women are really just killing it, entering industries, you know, especially black women. You know, we're of the fastest growing entrepreneurs in the world now. Just because we've, we've, we've stepped outside of the household role and begin to really create wealth for our families ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think real estate is a phenomenal vehicle to do that. Everyone always tells us own ownership, ownership, ownership. They don't tell you that the condition of this home may need renovations before you can make any money off of it. And now you have to have the ability to lead a team. Right. To, to finish. Lead your team to finish. That, that part right there. That's, that's the sauce. That's the sauce. But, you know, <laughs> you got to figure it out. So go ahead, guys. If you have questions, now is the time to drop them. Go ahead and drop them. She asked for our books again. Someone oh. did um, have some questions. So I said, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Richest Man in Babylon, 48 Laws of Power. Again, not books you've never heard of before. Maybe ones that you may not have gotten to, but huge for the initial step in shifting your mindset. I think everything starts and stops in your mind. The ability to do three jobs instead of one. The ability to finish instead of quit. All those things are mental. So you want to make sure that you keep your mind clear and you focus and just constantly taking in the things that you need to be successful. So best way to find a good enough, I know, right? A good enough contractor. <laughs> so here's one of my strategies. And again, not specific to me. We all do it. Okay. If you have time during the day to drive around and still contractors from other people's mud to million. Shout out to mud to million. Right, definitely. Auntie <laughs> we Aisha. All read that, right? Yes. Buy that book. It's one of our, you know, one of our people. She's phenomenal. She's doing big things. You definitely want to make sure you support. Um, but uh I drive around during the day and I still contractors from other job sites. <laughs> <laughs> Not mad at you. Not mad at you at all. Okay, how much are the interior design and staging services? Okay, so staging can cost anywhere from three to five thousand dollars. Look it up. When you see a house on HDTV, a lot of times at the end they'll give you, you know, kind of like the breakdown on what they spent. Staging mm -hmm. is always like seven to ten thousand. Philadelphia will not allow me to charge seven to ten thousand dollars <laughs> for staging. So it's somewhere between three, three thousand and five thousand dollars. But right, that when so we get you on the main line. We, you know, we put you on the main line. You going over there soon. They need listen, you. Listen, they I need get, you. Listen, I'm getting all my stripes right now. <laughs> I'm learning all the ins and outs and, you know, kind of developing. So that's can we, cool. can we ask how you've been able to uh, get like some of your, your deals? Like what's one of the ways that you find your deals? So I like deals and this is just me. I like deals that come from wholesalers. 
And okay. I'll tell you why. Because I'm already spread so thin. I'm a fan of wholesalers. I'm sorry. I just am. Mm -hmm. I think that when you meet, I have three or four good friends that are wholesalers. They're good people. They're good guys. They're not out to do anything dirty. And, and we get to hear about these off-market deals before they hit the market, before there's a frenzy. You create that synergy with, or, you know, you create that. Um, confidence with the wholesalers and and it's like a lookout it's a friendship it's a it's a community it's not I've never been burned by a wholesaler I think they should make their money whatever the number is they're doing the work that I don't want to do right I don't want to well, call through lists I don't want to do that I want to design houses I want to stage houses I want to build houses I want to renovate kitchens and baths I do not want to find off-market deals from lists and all of that. But I right. would like it if you cleaned all that up. And, and call me. To me <laughs> <laughs> nice and clean. No, nothing on the title. Ready to go. The numbers are clean. You make your five to 10,000. So that's, my house. that's what I was going to say. I think that's the only part, the struggle. Like now the wholesalers, because it's so easy to be a wholesaler. Like these dudes be listening to stuff online and be like, they trying to make what you making on, on a wholesale tip. Like, Dog, like that's not how it works. But that's see, you're, you have wholesale deals, and you said that. So what that means is there's a lot of wholesalers out there that think like that. So why do business with somebody who's trying to make thirty, forty thousand off of a deal when you can do business with somebody? I've had wholesalers say to me, "Look, my normal thing would be like nine because it's you. I'm gonna do like six. Right. And I'm like bet. Right, right, right. You know, and if I could do something for you on the back end, I love that barter. Like, I don't always make money off of staging because I work with investors and I'll lower my price to work with an investor that I want to build a relationship with. Right. Like, so I'm, I really do a lot of bartering, uh, bar bartering, excuse me. You bet. No, so I, I agree. So, like, even with the wholesale situation, because I'm a realtor, I might wholesale a property to you, but I might not tax you because you let me list it when you go to, to, to resell it. Like, so I'm going to still make my coins. It's just delayed, per se. Yeah, and we're, oh. we're, it's a relationship. It feels good. Right. I don't like lopsided deals. We're sitting in the closing. I made 10, you made 15. Like, why would we do I, I mean, that doesn't feel trying good. To, trying, to, to, trying to hide it on the HUD somewhere or off the HUD. And that's the thing, though. So I just don't do business with those guys. So I've never had those experiences. So I'm not bitter towards wholesalers. I have great friends that are wholesalers. Like, I mean friends like right, right, right. You know what i mean that i trust that i think are just extremely dope people and they happen to be wholesalers and they acquire properties and i get to know about them i don't have any shortages of of finding properties someone just asked what's next for you so for me uh you know 50 rentals <laughs> mm. look i'm not mad at it say it uh, 50 rentals which takes every single day of what i do that leads to that um and uh, a full service interior design firm where we are exclusively doing kitchens and bathrooms and staging those are the three things i want to do kitchens baths and staging for my interior design firm and i want to do more and more projects like that so that it can expand so you got me you had me thinking i'm not again um with the 203k i feel like for a lot of the first time home buyers that just say you can't get that house that you know that's 200 plus but we got you in that sweet spot, maybe 150, 175, but you got that room, you could use a 203K and then we connect them with you to do the bathroom and kitchen to give it that same effect. And now you get the extra 20 grand on the back end because kitchens and baths are what sells the house. Mm -hmm. and, and buying a home as a buyer, think about it, so work in reverse. As a buyer, that is the only emotional purchase you're allowed to make, right? So when you walk into a house, you say to yourself, this just feels right. Right. Or this doesn't feel so good. So if you know that that's the thinking of your buyer, why not create that emotional connection instantly? So crazy thing. I had a client. We were out today looking and the wife and she walked through the kitchen to the eating area. She said, oh, I could feel it. So like I tell people, I don't sell you the house. The house sells itself. And this house was completely renovated. The paint, the, the way it all flowed, the feng shui. She was like, I can feel it. And like, I tell people like, yo, don't, again, you, you're going to feel it. So like, it's that's an why we emotional purchase, right? If that home does not feel good to those buyers, they will not buy it. 
Right. Because they walk in and envision themselves creating memories and doing different activities in the house. And that's why realtors like when their sellers stage the house. I have so many realtors that come to me like, listen, my seller needs to stage this home because, again, it helps them not have to sell the home because now... I'm the person that turns a home from a square box and creates the actual layout, okay. creates the actual functionality to a house. If you look at a before and after before I stage it and it's a square box, mm -hmm. and if you look at after I stage it and it's a home, why wouldn't you spend the extra two, three thousand dollars for that final step? It's right. like granite countertops. You do not skip that step. You so we, I, mean? I had another client yesterday. He's doing a flip, and he's like. You know me, man. I can't but put that granite in here. I can't put it in. So he put it for Mike. He Micah? did. He did. He needs to go to jail for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a federal offense. He did. He did. For well, his, the problem with him is so he started out heavy in the rentals back in the like the wild, wild west of real estate, say from like 04 and up, like when they were giving like no doc loans and just going. So he's got all these rentals where he's like, the people don't appreciate it. I'm like, yo, it's a different time. The people appreciate it. Stop. I can't so get the taste out of my mouth. For my <laughs> <laughs> So like if you no. So like if you no. went So he's got like nice floors, nice cabinets, and then for Micah. Then he's got no backsplash in the kitchen, but then nice appliances. I'm like, why do you keep doing this to me? Like, said, why? Why? You, why do you keep doing this? Right, because cause the thing is he calls me and he's like, I need you to work your magic. Like, I'm like, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> these sellers sometimes because i'm a stager so i get to see a lot that's the other thing god has really 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 been good to me meaning that i meet a lot of investors i meet a lot of contractors gcs and, and just affiliates you know mm -hmm. i'm always i'm in i tell people all the time when my properties are on fire i get to hide in fellow investors finished renovation projects <laughs> i'm nowhere near finished but I'm always hopping around in somebody's finished house, staging it. Right. But, you know, with, it, it's just I get to see a lot of the finished product of, of homes and I get to see the style and the versatile, you know, approach to mm -hmm. investors and how they they design these houses. And then sometimes it's crazy. You'd be like, they wouldn't do that. Oh, yes, they did. Yes, they did. But two people just asked um, questions. So one person wants to know. Should they buy a personal property first or an investment property? You want to I answer never, it first? I have never owned a personal home. My very first home was an investment property. Okay. I so, would suggest investment. I mean, you can do both. Right. So, all right, so I'm saying I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm going to just say my take on it is I feel like most people don't do the discipline that you did to be in that position, right? So like most people, they, they over leveraging as it is. So I tell people, I feel like one way to save is if you do own your home, because now as we build up that house, we got the equity. Eventually, we can use that money for a down payment to another house or even to just cut your expenses, depending on how much the rent is. I know you was talking about the fifteen hundred dollars in rent. Like, yo, that's a that's a mortgage somewhere. Right. So somebody just asked, they said, wait, so you rent. Here's the thing. You can either live in, here's the, the mindset. You got to always know yourself and know your numbers. You can live in a multifamily where you have a tenant paying you $1,500 a month and you live in the other unit. Mm -hmm. Or you can live wherever you want to live, take the $1,500 that you would have been occupying by living in that unit and put that towards your rent. And mm. still house hack from a different perspective. Right. So it's all about finesse. And that's the, that has been my biggest strategy, just being savvy and just kind of like intuitive and just like not approaching it from a very radical perspective. Not so much. It's so many ways to get into real estate and to be successful at it. You can have a duplex that you live in one unit and you rent out the other mm -hmm. unit or you can take the rent from one unit and use that to pay for where you want to live. Because suppose... My rentals aren't in areas that I want to live in. Right. That's just the bottom line for me. So, so I, I would use the rental income to pay, you know what I mean? And I live exactly where I want to live. I don't have any maintenance as far as, you know, all the home ownership stuff. I own right. multiple houses, but not any personal residence. No. Right. So, but that's, so that's where I'm saying, I think people have to understand what they're doing and where they're going. So like with your situation, 
I'm not mad at that. Not at all. Because again, you're living, like you said, I might not want to live over there, but now my rentals are paying for me to go live whether I want to live center city, city line, wherever you want to be. But, and then on top of that, now when I say, all right, I'm done with that, you know you're still in position to go buy. But I think the problem is people don't even be in, they're not even in position. Because you can turn it on and off when you want to. Absolutely. Versus like, yo, I'm just, I'm just over here just renting and I'm just renting. Nah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You have to know, like, switch from a consumer mindset to an investor mm -hmm. mindset, meaning this. When I buy something, I know I have the ability to triple my dollar. I know I do. I can do it a lot of different ways. So therefore, when I buy, let's just say something that costs $10, it might cost you $10 based on your ability, but it really costs me 30 Because I, I know that my dollars can triple. I know exactly how to triple my dollars. So that's, again, really being in touch with yourself and finding those little life hacks that you can use to put yourself in the best position. And again, it's not a secret make more spend less right and the crazy thing i don't think people realize too you not having a personal mortgage it's freeing up your credit to do all the great things that you're doing that's the other part. so so the i'm not going to give them that i'm not going to give them another thing but that's next that's round two well just yeah, we'll say that for another day another day Got but it. but the fact that you have the cash, the credit, and again, you didn't jam your credit up with a personal house. Like you said, your income's creating more income until you're ready. Yep. Most people most people don't even, they're not even in position, but they're, they're trying to buy an investment property, try and buy a personal house all at the same time. Like, we having this conversation, and you don't even have a credit score yet. Listen, I'm so very happy you said that because, again, you know, precision over speed is so important. I'm just telling you, know yourself, know where you are, give yourself the time. The most successful people that I've seen in real estate really put the time in to get prepared, right? So whatever it is that you have to do, clean up your credit because you do not want to borrow with bad credit because it's going to cost you three more times money. more than it would cost somebody with good credit. Why would you do that? Right. You know, it's all, it's just about, it's about just putting yourself in position, knowing who you are, being rational about who you are. It's levels to this. We all had bad credit before, so it's not a strike towards you. When we come out of college, the system is set up for us to be in, in certain debt. positions. Right. But get and, out of that position. Right. And I'll tell people, so I'm the I'm the opposite of you where like I'm not the patient person. Like so once I get the idea, I figure it out and like I gotta just go do it. But as I've gotten older and had kids now, this is where I've been like, yo, you can't do that right now. Just you gotta higher. Right. You gotta you gotta slow down and figure that part out. You know, yeah. so, so a couple of things, you know, be in position, put yourself in position. You know, when you get to situations where it seems like it's impossible, it's not. You can do way more than you think you can do in a matter of 24 hours. I want everybody to start looking at their life within a, a 24 hour kind of like mindset. Right. So you only need eight hours of sleep. So My man, are, you, are you wasting the rest of that time? Like you have 168 hours a week. If you take eight hours of sleep away from all of that, you still have almost 100 hours. Where is your productivity? What are you look, doing? Like You know that you, the like, iPhone, look on the phone and let's just log in your hours. How many hours you spent on the phone and look at the apps and stuff that you was consuming? It's at least 20 something hours on your phone that you lost. At well, least. I, I certainly encourage everyone to find the holes that they can find in their finances, figure out where the frivolous spending is coming from. Cause I want you to just know it is not the virtue. This is the add up over time. So mm -hmm. pay attention to that. Pay attention to what you're doing. What investment also means investment of your time, because that's the direct correlation with your revenue. So where are you investing your time and are you getting a return? When you read a book, that's a higher return than when you're on Instagram floating around, unless it's, you know, connecting with, <laughs> you know, people that are doing what you want to do, but your finances and your time, take a, a big look at those things when you're working about, when you're worrying about, you know, kind of getting in position to really take your life to the next level. We're telling you guys to be investors because we want you to take your life to the next level. We don't want you to just have the lifestyle of a hundred thousand dollars a year. Let's say you're lucky enough to make a hundred thousand dollars a year. That is nothing. That's a that fourteen hundred dollars a week after taxes. <laughs> it's nothing. You need six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars a year just to live good. 
Right. And to have the freedom to do what you need to do. I love it. I love it. I love it. So it's a mindset. I teach heavily, like, mindset instead of fundamental, heavily, you know, you don't leave with the fundamentals, you leave with the mindset because the mindset will search out the fundamentals that you need to be successful. There you go. Like I said, you, you've been giving us a lot of heat, a lot of subtle heat, too. You try to bring it in subtle, but it's like, I don't know if they catching it, but it's, I know I'm catching it, so I, I know but I got work to do. But that's because I, I personally live in beast mode, like personally, like day in and day out. I don't come out of beast mode. Right. Like I wake up, I'm on go. You know what right. I mean? So mm -hmm. it's, it's, again, you know, when it comes down to knowing you, knowing your family, knowing your situation, knowing where you are, and really just take it, you know, take a trial run. Like for six months, listen, we just came back from vacation. We, you know, we did some stuff this summer. I encourage everybody in September to buckle down. Down. Have, yes, have some fun. Go on one more vacation. Treat yourself to that lobster dinner, whatever it's going to be. Now, in September, buckle down. Buckle down with your time. Buckle down with your finances. Buckle down with your focus. And really put the emphasis on, you know, heavy on return, right? I'm only mm -hmm. going to spend my money on things that are going to bring me money. I right. want... See, that's, you know what they say, poor people work for money, rich people make their money work for them. So if you have any money, put it in a vehicle that is going to grow your money. If you have $10, if you have $100, find out how to turn that $100 into $500. Give yourself a month to do that. It's right. little challenges that you just want to constantly be involved in. You want to always, always, always challenge your mind to take it to the next level. If you're already good at making a million dollars, challenge your mind to make five million dollars. How can you do it? Who's making five million dollars? Who, you know, who can we connect with and get in that energy and start to do little things personally that will put you in, in a better position? So I'm not going to lie. I think I think real estate is one of your passions, but I think you got something else going on there outside of real estate. No, as far as what I have, what what do I have? I, th I think you got you got something else going on there where you could you could be helping the people out. So, it's, so the it's name more of the than... book is called Strategy. Okay. <laughs> but these are all things that are connected to what I do, right? So writing the book is called Strategy. It's not out yet. Me no, whoa, whoa. So go. So okay, all right. So can we? Can you give it to us? Can you give it? Of course. Go of course. no, because you try to drop. Go ahead, give it to us now. We no, got it. No. Okay, so I think that every facet of life is a strategy. Every single thing that you do should be approached from a strategic position, you know, from what you do with your time, what you do with your finances, who you associate with, who you align yourself with, how you rear your children. Again, we didn't talk about that. We want to talk about children. I have two boys. And my oldest I didn't son, know if you wanted to bring that up. I didn't. That's what no, we got. We ran out of time once again. So we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about the, I don't my kids are off limits as far as social media is concerned mm -hmm. for the most part, just because I think social media is very, very dangerous. And my boys are the most important thing to me. So that's not something that I want to, you know, kind of understand. I understand. Too heavily. But my oldest son is also an investor. He is uh, overseas now teaching English as a second language. He's 18. You know, he's just a, he's a phenomenal guy. He's, you know, we, the mindset early on. Wait, is over, overseas about. teaching. Getting paid to live elsewhere, living his best life somewhere else. So like, I at didn't age of eighteen. Right. So I didn't realize what I missed out on when I was in college when I had that opportunity to go teach abroad or study abroad. No one knows that you can do that unless you know. Well, I just was I was big on like, yo, I don't want to travel. I don't want to go that far and be away from the family for too long. And then I realized like, when else am I gonna have an opportunity to no. get paid? But you know, nobody was talking to me about that. So now like, I'm an advocate for. Going to college, good, bad, or indifferent, becoming an RA, being involved on campus, and doing all of those things that you could do while you broke, because that's yeah. the time to do it. Yeah. And you say he's 18 and he's invested. He has a, he has a brand. He has a, his brand is Focus. So okay. He's pushing. I mean, this boy has sold so many pieces because these young kids now have stuff that we don't have. They have the ability to go online and make sales and make money. And of course, his mom is in mogul mode at all times. And now he's right. kind of against me which is phenomenal when you get to the point where your child competes against your success you won and you because know you we want our kids to reach higher than we reach we want them to stand on our shoulders whatever level we get to we want them on our shoulders to go even higher so you have these conversations and you set these expectations 
I don't give my kids their birthday money. You know, we put that money in accounts and interest yielding accounts that do things that they understand. Okay. You know, they, they know why we're doing certain things. So, you know, it, it's, it's a mindset that you pass on to everybody near you and your children is the most beneficial to what you're going to do in terms of self-development. Nice. Well, wait, so two things, right? Let's segue back. So when is the book dropping? No time soon. I write that book in the middle of the night when I have thoughts and it's a really, really, really good book. If somebody okay. tells you that they're going to give you a book called Strategy and every chapter is a different strategy on how to win in life, read it. Mm -hmm. okay. Because even from my perspective where I've been and the things that I've done with no resources to start, like zero resources, it's a good situation. So you would want to, you know, you would want to read that. So again, I just don't have a lot of time like trying to do that. Um, I, I also have a class coming up, which is a wealth summit, which is just, again, getting in the right mind. You know the date? So COVID had, had happened, right? We were going to do it back in March. So now I'm hoping to do it the last week of July. So in a week or two, which I'll okay. post information about that. Please share it. I'll share it. I'll share it. Absolutely. Just because, again, I'm a huge fan of going from the mindset of, hey, I'm just going to live life based on how I feel today. I want to eat what I want to eat. I want to do what I want to do. And I want to switch that mindset to being more strategic. Intentional, right? right? Intentional. You want to be intentional and decisive about what you do with your time and your money. Because that's what's going to save you in 30 years when you're you know, in that retirement phase. Mm -hmm. So and don't feel bad about the book. So it took me four years to write my book. It took, but I got it. Not, oh my God, where do I get that from? So you can, the link in my bio, Real Estate 100, the team gotcha. of Millennial Investment Blueprint. So like, again, my background's in education. So I partnered with my mentor, Lisa Porto, and we wrote this book to teach. If I could teach the youth how to invest in real estate, I could teach adults. So literally you could get this book, Amazon or link in my bio, um, the investment blueprint. So you can learn about the ins and outs of getting started in real estate. And that's maybe, all I try to teach them, just I'll, enough to get them started. I'll, I'll try to read it before my class and then maybe I'll give a couple of them away at the That'd class. That'd be dope. That'd be yeah, dope. Yeah, man, that's big. I didn't even know you had a book. Like you gotta, we gotta talk more about that. So I'm, I'm, I'm learning to be more talkative about the book. But like I said, my thing is really this part is sharing other people. So like I, you know, when I yeah. slot mine's in there, but I really enjoy sharing other people, especially when I can get these kind of gems that you're giving. Yeah, we got, you got to let us support you as well in the process. So it's all good, guys. You know, stay connected with us. We'll take you along with the journey. Um, I am very transparent on what I do. My brand is for the love of style and real estate. So what you will see from me is how I married my hobby into a very lucrative business or businesses and how that is now developing for me every day. So you'll see the day-to-day -to, -day to the different um, jobs that I go up for. I uh, propose a lot of jobs. I work a lot of different jobs. I design a lot of properties. And, you know, I'm just kind of in the field, really just kind of getting it done day-to-day. -day, and I'm not afraid to show you the good, the bad, the ugly, and just really how to win, <laughs> despite but, of those things. Right. But that on top of you, you ain't quitting. You ain't got no, it ain't no quitting. Oh, no. Oh, no this, is, this, is, this is for life. <laughs> this is for life different levels of it but this is right. for life no nah, we'll definitely salute to you and like i said definitely appreciate you and definitely wishing you and your, your young kings nothing but luck um I, I definitely like that how you inspiring them putting them in position and they and they listening to you so that's definitely what's up and i know the young ladies on here they definitely listening to you too so that's what it's all about every time i win i win for us as far as women are concerned so we're all connected and i know for a fact that's a big, 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 big passion of mine. Work ethic and education are the only two things that I feel like you need to make it. That's enough. Okay. Those two things are enough. But I appreciate you having me here. I definitely want to get my hands on a few copies of that book for me, my kids, and just, you know, those that I think might benefit from it. For sure. For sure. Um, definitely. I'll make sure we connect about that. And then lastly, just... Also, let them know, do you know when you, you don't have a date yet for your event, for your so the summit? Last week of Saturday, the last Saturday, Jordan Fredini is a phenomenal guy. He's, you know, donating space. I know space. Jordan, right. Trade for Jordan, differences, he's yes. donating the space. That last Saturday in July, we're pushing for, uh, which is the 25th. It's so going to be limited seating, I take it? Very limited. Okay. And we're probably going to have to do it again on the first because we've already kind of sold out. And I don't want that many people in one room at the time just because right. obviously safety is a big, big focus for us. Mm -hmm. So um, I will keep everybody posted. 
uh, you guys have my information now. So we share, have, go ahead and share it for people who don't have it, your social media. So I'm Caronical, so it's C-A-R-O-N-N-I-K-O-L-E. If you want to, you know, kind of see what I do, my website is Caronical. My Facebook is Caronical. All of my stuff is is Caronical. My email is Caronical at gmail.com. I'm very vocal. If I have time to, you know, have those discussions, I will. I invite people into my renovation projects, the job sites, all the time. Okay. So come in, take a look, a look at, you know, it's not. Get inspired. You know, it's not, this isn't pretty. This is right. not pretty. Behind the scenes is not pretty. So I'm <laughs> okay. happy to, you know, pretty much show you guys what's going on behind the scenes and what it takes to, to get things completed. Definitely. And I got to ask this one question. So when we can close out after this, um, how do we bridge that gap? So like my struggle is I feel like you, like you were saying, females are getting in the game and they are killing it. But I also feel like even on my like uh, sales side, I deal with mostly females. Females tend to be more disciplined and patient to get what they need and to get it done. So I'm, I, I, I haven't had the opportunity to ask a female, but how can we get the males more involved with doing things the right way or just bridging that gap? of, you know, of so females and males can work together? So I think, you know, personally, men are, you know, competitive by nature. A lot of men that I've come across, when they see me doing it, they like, yo, if she could do it, I could do it. That is what I want. That is what I want for everybody. I want you to know, if I can do That's it- That's good you, competition, though. That's absolutely. good competition. That's healthy. You, you, you hold people accountable that you care about, and you get, you know, get into these healthy competitions where it's like, I got three to five properties. What you got? You know what right, I mean? Like, right. And you make sure you have these conversations. Like, ownership is important, but it's difficult. And you want to invite everybody to join that, you know, that movement of right. ownership. And you want to continue to pretty much give the information away. We need to be more, you know, just vigilant on giving the game. Because it's right. not a secret. It should not be a secret culturally for us. And I think that our men need to understand that we're not trying to pass you guys. I think that we're just trying to, if we don't get a husband, still be okay. Right. That's the number one thing. When me and my, my female friends, we sit around the table and we make it known whether we have a husband or not, being a, a, you know, a millionaire or a billionaire is on the list of things to do. And we're not waiting around for that anymore. So um, as it, I, I don't really have the answers on how to motivate the guys to get more on board other than them having strong women. I think it's really important for men to understand that we can do things that they can't do. And I think the male female dynamic is extremely powerful mm -hmm. just because I'm single does not mean that I don't like, you know, the combination of having a man to speak to a contractor for me. I do it because I'm not going to let that hold me back. If I don't have a man to speak to the contractor, then guess what? I need to speak to that contractor myself. I need to hold that contractor accountable myself. Right. But I think more men need to understand that women are great to have in their lives. So all the successful, make... the successful mentors and men that I, I, I work with and that motivate me, one of the secret things like, or things I noticed was they have a, they have a spouse. And, that, and, that, and it's, it's, do you realize that you can't get into certain clubs unless you're married? <laughs> I didn't people don't know. even. Sometimes people in business don't take you serious as a man unless you're married because it, it shows that you have the ability to commit and overcome obstacles. Mm. The reason that men aren't as successful now is because women overpopulate men. Social media makes everybody a click away, and they're distracted. We're not and distracted. So just I imagine not, not reaching your goals because you're distracted. And that's what it is. I am not, I'm not distracted. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I don't allow myself to be distracted. Right. You focused. You focused. Because I could spend four or five years doing that, or I could spend four or five years doing this. And the ROI right. on this is more guaranteed, more concrete, and it's more lucrative. Right. So once we get guys to understand that we are to compliment them and that, you know, Every man has met a phenomenal woman and hasn't taken the opportunity just because, you know, some men marry and some men don't. Right. Well, you get three great women in your life from a Bronx tale. So you can't, you know, you got to, you're not going to have too many options if you keep messing it up. So, you know. Why am I not married? If I were married, would I bring value to a man? Would For I sure. Would I encourage him to be more disciplined, to be right? more, you know, um, decisive? 
and to be, you know, more of an investor, would mm -hmm. I? Absolutely, I would. But you have guys, you know, that, that choose other options. That is the answer to your question. I think that if you find that there's a group of people that are successful, why not partner with them? Right. You, have that, you have that option. Look, two, two, two incomes, two, two, two minds to, to put it all together. Mm -hmm. And then we could leverage each other to do multiple things at once. So I don't like to answer that question. How come men aren't getting in the game as aggressively as well? No, not the, not, that, not the getting in the game, but more so just how come. So like my challenge is I felt like you hit it on the nose earlier. Or I don't know if you realize what you said, but I picked up on it that the comp comp the competitiveness in males, so like our ego won't allow us to be open to new ideas or to sometimes even just collaboration. Or sometimes when you meet a woman that's doing her thing, you use that you find ways to the when you when you meet a woman who's doing her thing, the only thing you should be thinking is how can I partner? How can I add to that? Not how can, how I, can I make her feel like less than she is so that I can feel better. So my ego, so I can keep my ego up. Let's get rid of the ego. That's going to help <laughs> answering your question. <laughs> if we can lower our egos and partner with some of these phenomenal women, because most of them are single. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So can I, can I push back a little bit? Sure. Can the, can the females possibly just be a little open, though? Can they be a little more open-minded? Do you hear? Did I tell you what I do every day, all day? I flip Go. out on men all day, every day. Do you think that I plan on being open minded? It's like, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you crazy. She's like, Do you think? I'm just joking. Okay, so, so we're alpha females. We're alpha we're, females. And but no, so. Play. But I'm okay with alpha female, right? Like, I, I think. So I think it's like for the males, the ego. And I love these conversations because I feel like we need to talk about it more, right? Sure. So, like, my next, in a couple months, I'm doing another segue of these interviews in the barbershop called Six Feet of Knowledge. Okay. So, when I want to do male and female to talk about family, business, and just community as well. Um, but, but before we get there, but I think the males is the ego. But for the females, though, alpha females or who, just females in general, I think that we have to, or I would like, I'm trying to word it right without getting punched let's in the go, eye. Let's just give it. Give it to us. <laughs> okay, so if we could just be more, not more, but be open-minded because I'm just saying not all guys can go, you know, alpha, alpha. Or some guys might be better at giving some direction, but they still could, I still could be a male without you, you know, barking at me. Like, I, we, could, we could figure out how to compliment each other. Look, see, it's that face. That's that face right there. Remember I did the other emoji? Now I'm about to do this emoji. Look, see, see, see? Like, come on. Get it together. Piss or get off the pot, guys. Uh-oh. Like, Uh-oh. <laughs> but see, like, but I'm see. Sorry. But like, no, on, no, no, no. It's not 50-50. It's 100-100. Mm, so when you I say that. Have you, I, can't, I can't have you give 70. So when you say that, the 100-100, I'm not mad. I'm not even going to argue with you. So initially when you started it, you know, the, it can't be the 50-50. And I was going to say, like, no, it can be. But if you go in 100-100, I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at you. You, you match I'm, my I'm energy. I'm a, it is, it's, it's like, you know how dope it would be for a woman to really live in her truth and to flourish and to have a person in their, like, in their perspective truth and killing it? Like, like you said, that's, that's how God, in my opinion, really created this thing to be. I think that any woman that's out here building business is at a deficiency when she's by herself. I really do believe that. And I think that a man is as well. But a lot of times we're having to convince these men that they need a female and we're done with it. I don't have 10 years well, no, to convince don't... a man that he needs a partner. What were you going to say? So, I don't have that time. No, no, no. So I'm saying I agree with you from that standpoint. How much standpoint. money can I make? In that 10-year run. But no, that's, but but that's what's happening. We're making no, money. We're not we're not. No, but, but no, but that's no what more. I'm saying. That's where I'm saying that's a little bit of the gap where I get it. Make your money, right? Make your money. <laughs> but however, however, all I'm saying is there there are some males that are cool with playing the co-partner as far as like you said like you might be on 100 every day he might not be that kind of guy that's on 100 but that don't that's make him problem. not a good that don't make him not a good partner though problem 
home. Rise to the occasion. We're going to retire and we're going to chill. But the but thing, we, listen, he might be. So what about? For, so I'm on, just. It's the time and a place for everything. It's go time for okay. African Americans. We have opportunity. We have a voice. We have platforms. We busting down doors. We mm -hmm. get some stuff handled. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I can't be sensitive today. I can't be. So sensitive you said that today. word again. So you going So you said that word again. You said the sensitive word. So. I feel like not so that's one of the other struggles of being a black male or just being a male in general so like i can't sh i can't take my armor off and if i can't take my armor off with my lady who can i take my armor off that's with? it my my favorite girl just said there's it's tough to have two alphas in one relationship and she's absolutely right see i missed that i'm going she down did. to she it said, she said she she brought in a good point it's okay. it's tough to have two alphas in one relationship but I want to say this, when is the goal most important? The go if the goal is we're going to have 50 rentals in the next 10 years, it's mm -hmm. going to take us both approach this from an aggressive standpoint and really, 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 like you said, we're going to have to be disciplined. I can't be on a spending freeze and you and you doing you. Like, I mean, partnerships mean... See, this is the point. Because men are, because women overpopulate men so much, I have, I have expectations and boundaries. And here's what we're going to do when you come over here. We're going to invest. We're going to work hard. And we're going to go ham. And we're going to enjoy the fruits of our labor when it's time to do that. If you enjoy your fruits right now, we're not the same. All right. So, so I feel. I'm not I, enjoying my fruit right now. <laughs> I'm not enjoying it. And I mean, but I, I want to get back to your original question because it was a very, very, very good question. How amount of success and males that we're we're now seeing this 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 thriving, you know, African American woman, you know, this woman, like she's really accomplishing a lot. She's working three jobs, she's making it happen. How do we motivate our men? To, to really get shit done in the same manner. And I think that, you know, knowing that having, it's, what if you, your wife, I'm pretty sure there's things that you're weak in that she motivates you to do on a day-to-day -day basis because you are fortunate enough to realize the need for that. When you realize the need for a partner that gives you the ability to compromise, you're like, okay, you know, I know I can't do it without her. So I'm gonna put up with this or I'm gonna put up with that. I think men need to realize that they need a partner because if they come to us in that way, there's no level of alpha female that's going to like trash them. That's not what we want to do. When you see women that are dominant and they're just mean to men, that's not the majority. Okay. I'm not mean to men. I'm not going to let you waste my time. Because right. I know what my time is worth. Okay. But if I have a, you know, a participating partner that I feel has value within themselves and ability to make it happen, I'm absolutely okay with doing my part as a woman. Okay. But most times the men that I've, that I've seen, they don't see the value enough to use that as a way to govern themselves, to allow themselves to get to a solid partnership. So, so there you are. So now we're on the same wave. We're on the same page, right? So that was where we was pushing, pushing to, right? The right. fact that you said, hey, you just, I don't know if you realize you just said it, but you just said, hey, I can take my foot off the gas a little bit if I know I can trust you. That is where you just took it. Don't ever say that to me, Anthony. I'm not taking my foot <laughs> Don't ever say that. So, all right, so not take your foot off, but. Put your foot, get in your car. I'm getting my car. We're going to both put our foot on the gas and we're going to go 100 But now you're going to let me drive and not try to tell me how to drive or which way to go because you trust me. Mm, that's Don't fight it. Don't fight it. That's the part. Don't fight it. We still going to get there. That's the part. But I, I don't need you to... I can't resist the urge to tell you how to do it because I know that I've tried it the way you're doing it and you're not doing it right. No. So as a, I'm just, I'm going to say for the males, as an alpha male, I'm saying, hey, I don't need that. If we still get there, or even if I mess up, let me mess up. And then come no. tell me how to fix it. Then no. come tell me. No. You wasted money. You wasted time. <laughs> You're messing up our resources. 
No, you're going to frustrate me. You can't do it the wrong I can't let you. Tracy, can't Tracy just said it. She said alpha females are submissive when they know they have a partner who can handle leadership. So that's but if why you're messing up, you can't handle leadership. But it's not even about messing up. It's about once you feel like you can trust, it'll work. But Let the thing is, you gotta be open to be you gotta be open to trusting, and he gotta be open to criticism. What do you most males lesson? don't want to hear criticism? Listen, more importantly, I'm speaking for all the women on this live right now. I'm gonna ask you a question as a black man. Why do you feel like men are allowing women? to dominate these industries without partnering with them. You, there's, a, there's at least 10 men that could partner with me right now. Mm -hmm. From a romantic perspective, from all angles, partnership, parenting, why haven't they done it? Why am I single? So, it's, so there's two okay, parts. Okay, you, you're stuttering. <laughs> <laughs> you're alpha male and you have friends. Right. Why don't these men partner with these strong women that are getting it done? We're proving our numbers don't lie. So I'm saying I can't answer it fully, but to the best of my ability, <laughs> the best of my ability is that what I'm saying, what, what I'm going to say is that I feel like the struggle again is you got some males who don't really know what they want. So that you know, it, it's hard to really be like, yo, I'm going to come put my best foot forward. But he they said also... we love bums. He said we love bums. He's so true. He said we love bums. Because you know why? It's called, it's not, I'm going to tell you from a political perspective, mm -hmm. low-hanging fruit. Six o'clock on Saturday morning, I'm at Home Depot, my love. I'm not cuddling. Mm -hmm. I'm not hung over from the night before. If you can't get up at six o'clock in the morning on a Saturday and go to Home Depot with me, but you want to like rock out with whoever is so, partying. But that's not the males I know though. I know plenty of males that's getting up and getting to it. So those males I don't know. Like so you, why like, aren't they so why aren't they partnering? But so that's the part that I'm saying that if to the uh, the pushback to the females is I feel like y'all gotta know when to hold them, when to fold them. It gotta be some give and take. I'm saying, look, see how you lit up? I feel like that I'm saying from my, the alpha female has to know like, yo, you're, you can be an alpha, but you also got to understand you can't always be the front alpha. That's it don't, true. it don't work like that. That's true. We were That's made true. to protect. Us as men were made to protect. If you don't let me protect you, whether you trust me or don't trust me, but if you don't give me that chance, it's like, nah, I'm cool. I'm just going to do my thing. And then I won't lie, I talked to some males. Some males is just on some type of time where they got these fears in their mind. And I, again, I go to therapy for a reason. It's stuff in my head that I was taught or I thought that I needed to, to do certain things that it was, I was taught the wrong stuff. I had to talk to somebody to, to figure out that shit was wrong. Right. Absolutely. You know what? And I think this is major. This is major, 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 right? Because we're talking about getting to wealth. And we know that you can get to wealth a lot faster because two is better than one. Two brains is better than, better than one. Two incomes is better than one. Two FICO scores of 800 is better than one. So I do believe that it would be more productive for me to partner with someone who is also of a mutual benefit. But at the same time, there's those barriers that, that block us. For instance, like you said, maybe the alpha female don't know how to release a little bit of the control. But the control comes from us having to do it on our own for so long and finding strategies and strategy, right? And the ability to make it happen. Now we know how to do it. I know how to, I know how to do it. Real estate, Tracy, go ahead and, and let off. And look, my wife is you on said, here. Y'all got married real estate couples in here mm -hmm. ready to go Twitter fingers on y'all. Let's go. We want to hear it because you know why? If we, that's a win for us culturally. Y'all know that, right? If I can get a male and a female to partner romantically and parenting, et cetera, et cetera, then it goes beyond wealth. Right. Now you have a balance. Now you have, you know, harmony. And now you have another sense of purpose. But what I, what we can't have is issues constantly and conflict and anything that's counterproductive to the bottom well, line. Well, dumb issues. So like, I, again, so I'll say, I'll be first person to say in the beginning 
like you talked about them distractions before in order for me to get to where I'm at now in my relationship, in my in my life, business, personal, with my wife, with my kids. So I love Tracy tonight. She said partnership is always mm -hmm. a win for the culture. But the, but the thing is, we don't I don't get away from I'm not saying I don't need a man, I don't want a man. I'm saying I don't have a man. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. So I'm pretty sure that because of this, your DMs is going to be going crazy. But again, so all I'm saying is, look, I'm trying to figure out a way to get my brothers to definitely take the lead or at least take the initiative, right? But I'm also saying I feel like I know a lot of dope women, and I feel like the women take the lead a little easier than the males for some reason, at least from my perspective. But I'm saying I need the ladies to also be a little more open to allowing us to, one, take our armor off, and to, two, you know, no winner. When to, when to push, when to, when to fall back. I really do appreciate the turn that this conversation went to because you're coming from a male perspective and I think that it's super duper important to hold males accountable amongst yourselves. So now that you've reached a certain level of harmony and purpose, you're able to share that secret sauce with some of your male counterparts, which then allow them to be more focused and it's a level of accountability culturally we need to learn to hold one another more accountable and i say that primarily for men good men that have chosen that have chosen to take on wives and partners and build empires with strong mm -hmm. black women need to encourage their counterparts other males their if their friends and colleagues that that's also a good look right so when i see my homie running around with a bunch of women i'm not afraid to say eh, that's what he was doing back in the day grown men leveling up now Right. We're taking on one partner. We're going through those hard days. We're having those hard conversations. And now we're joining forces and combining resources. Because really, to be quite honest with you, that is what we need culturally. We need to learn to combine resources and have that accountability in the community amongst each other. Because again, the family structure has been broken and Black women are, 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 are running with the torch. But, so, but that was why I'm, I brought that up. Because I'm saying, hey... Now we done made some strides, but we also fell backwards in some other instances. Yeah. So now, yeah. again, how do we, we bridge that gap? So and like you said about the conversation piece, I honestly wouldn't have had them conversations. My wife, she's, she's like subtle with the conversations, but then when we have them, it's like, oh, I hear you. I hear you. Now I, now I got to deal with it. Yeah. Relationships are difficult. And I think now, once we're talking, we just preached about return on investment. So if I invest 30% of my life in a relationship that may or may not go somewhere versus if I return, if I invest in this property that I know is going to make me $50,000, <laughs> what's the best use of my time? Is it, is it going to be in the risk of a relationship or in the guarantee? So I'm a, I'm a push, I'm a push back on you in regards to you have to take that risk in order to at least find out if you're going to get anything. So I'm just saying, no, nope, no, nope. no, nope. it don't matter. You just said we're not quitting. So you, it's the same thing. Relationships we, we is the same way. No, 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 <laughs> you better not say that. You better not. No, no. If, if I was, if I was a family member of yours, would you rather me be running through trying to find a husband or, or, or trying to make a million dollars? But, but you can do both. You work three jobs at one well, time. You can do both. Effort. All right, so that, all right, so when I do my when I do my event, right? So y'all gonna hear it now. When I do my event, and we have all the power bosses in the city, we mixing and mingling. But now you know in the room is the people that's mixed and mingled as heavy hitters. I want you to still be open minded. All right, just at that time, at that time, be open minded. Long as you come open minded at that time. Open mind is always a good thing. You don't ever want, I don't want to be closed mind. That's a fear of mine that you get older and you get stuck in your ways and you start closing your mind to new things. I want to remain open. I definitely do. But at the same time, I think I'm 36. I've tried relationships for many years. I, I prefer being an investor because I, I, I see my return and the probabilities, right? So that's what I go by. I go by probability. Like the probability of me investing in this guy is here. The probability of me investing in this land is here. It's going to cause me the nope. same amount of anxiety. So you are right in regards to the anxiety, but I'm saying to you, we don't need you to invest in us. Don't invest in us. We invest in ourselves if you get with the right one. 
We just need you to add to what we're investing in. I'm, I'm stuck on that for a second. You got me there. I'm just saying. Because I already know what I bring to the table. So that's why I'm saying, like, my wife saw what I brought to the table. I, she helped me, you know, explode it, make it better. A lady said, she just said, it got to, things got to get done. You know, and that's just... We just talked about discipline and patience. So you want us to apply the same discipline and patience that we apply to, to our career, to our relationships. I'm not... I'm just Damn. saying, don't be mad at the work. Don't be mad at Damn. it. It's don't work either way. Work. It's work but either way. The, listen, but what about the work that somehow blows up before it even amounts to anything? That's part of the game. Just like no, I might do it. I might do it. I might do a flip, put the same money in the same time, and that shit might go bad. I might not make no bread, but I live to fight another flip. It's the guys, game I signed up for. Guys, are you here? Are, okay, so we got 40 people in the room. <laughs> Anthony has somehow switched the conversation to the same amount of energy patience that you invest into your investment i'm just trying to help you, you relate also, to it you should also invest that into your partners and i'm disagreeing because i just said you can't I, invest in me don't invest in me i just need you to to bring me patience how long like how i mean come on look at how much you, stuff you can I can flip a house in four months. I'm, not, I can't wait. I'm about to throw the water. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm sorry. Maybe that's a downfall of mine. Yo, yo. So, so look. I see a lot of alpha females in here commenting, right? And I'm saying I love y'all dearly, and y'all out here doing the damn thing, right? But I'm also saying. I'm saying I think it's enough for us males out here that want to work with you. We want to compliment you. Dude, we I just had somebody make a good point. I'm going to stick with the metrics. I'm going to stick with the my own proven system. <laughs> I know exactly <laughs> what I'm going to get. <laughs> I'm I'm just at that point because again, when you get a taste of success and you kind of got a strategy and a formula, now you like, you know, I want to see how this relationship is going to go. I'm, it might distract. I, 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 I can't. Okay. I cannot. I, look at here, look at Tracy. Let it go. I can't. Not till I got a couple million dollars and I'm sitting where I need to be. It's not about so much control of others. It's control over my future. Like, I come from nothing. I finally have the ability to make millions of dollars. Why would I then now take some chances on relationships so so that's so look we got two minutes right we're gonna wrap this up and i just i just know i appreciate how this turned out all of this Me super too. dope synergy right absolutely but i'm gonna stop saying taking chances so like we talked about earlier mindset i'm telling you when i start taking out oh what if it don't work out i start taking out the you know the different stuff i'm telling you like the stuff the stuff i start thinking about the good stuff it started working like, and that's like literally like, so we probably had an argument probably in like, we going on probably four or five months right now. We doing, we doing hella good, you know? So, you know what? I love your balance. I'm not balanced. I'm aggressively building. But I got help. I got help. So therapy, <laughs> therapy might not be for everybody, but you got to have that. Like I got a big homie. He on here, like my big brother. He been married. Well, he been with his wife. His wife, he been married for four or five years. But he's been with his wife for 19 years. They've been together since they was 18. So, this, so again, how you surround yourself with, with other alphas or you surround yourself with the wolves, you got to start surrounding yourselves with some of them people. You know, I might need you to make me peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I need you to be okay with that. I can make you a sandwich, but here's the thing. Don't do something that's going to distract me when you know I got to get up at 6 o'clock tomorrow and go to Home Depot. That might be a good distraction. Don't be like that. <laughs> Don't be, look. Look, we got 40 seconds. Look, I yes. appreciate Good you. Good night, Look, guys. I, I love you. I pray for your success. And I'm so grateful that you spent this time with us tonight. Look forward to talking with you again. Likewise. Thank you again. Good night. Good night.